Hey, what's happening guys? Another piece of beautiful test equipment from my auction win. This is the Easy FC 7015U 100 megahertz universal counter. Again, these uh, pieces of equipment were all gone before I got to the school, so can't tell you how old they are. Although this one is still being sold and it sells for about $300, so decent piece of equipment. So this is a two channel counter. We have channel A and channel B. Both are good to the 100 megahertz. Uh, 250 volt max, 100 megahertz, one mega ohm impedance. And you can see our controls here. Um, this is the channel A controls. This is uh, AC coupling, attenuation one to one or one to 10, low pass filter on or off. Now this is for both channels, whether they use a separate or a common ground. Channel B controls coupling attenuation, low pass filter. Then we have our functions, our slope control, rising or falling, hold, and our gate time. So, you can see up here how many digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is eight digits. Very nice. And here on the menu display here, you can see it says A, frequency. And then if I press the button, now we have B, frequency, A, period, a totalizer, the ratio of A to B, and the time interval of A to B. Then over here we can change our gate time from 10 milliseconds to, what is that, uh, 0.1 second, 1 second, and 10 seconds. I think they, may, they mean 10 microseconds because 0.1 second would be that'd be 100 milliseconds. Okay, so 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds. You get the idea. All right, let's hook it up to a function generator and see how it does. Okay, I'm going to hook it up using a 50 ohm terminator. It's not going to really be necessary for the low frequencies we're going to be putting into it, but just because somebody will probably say, well, you didn't properly terminate that cable. So, neener, neener. I'm properly terminating the cable. All right. So, we are starting out. I'm using my digital function generator, the uh, FieldTech FY2300. This is a 1 volt peak to peak 100 uh, hertz square wave. And you can see there with our gate time at 100 milliseconds, we are getting 100 hertz. If I change the gate time to one second, you can see we go up there and we get a couple more digits. You're always gonna ignore that least digit, so pay no attention to that. And then if we go to the full 10 seconds, we get the complete resolution of the counter. And you can see that the gate time is lit, which means it's counting right now. And there we go. So I'm going to put it back to 100 milliseconds, which is fine for our use here. So there's 100 hertz. Take it up to 500. Looks pretty good. There's a kilohertz. And you can see now that the uh, kilohertz light is lit. There's 15 kilohertz. Now, there's no reason for me to go through all that with you. I'm going to go to the fastest speed I've got here, which is 6 megahertz. And you can see we've got 6 megahertz. Now, this thing claims a lower frequency floor of 10 hertz. So there's 10 hertz. And I'm going to put on the low pass filter, which helps get rid of any noise. Now you can see the gate time light flickering there. And if I change it to one second, solid, blink, blink, blink every second. So that shows you your gate time. Now we have a trigger adjust here, but not really needing to pay any use to that right now. 
All right, so let's take off our connector from channel A and go to channel B here. Boink. So we'll put our low pass filter on for channel B. And it's looking pretty good. Let's actually go a little bit lower. There's five hertz. And it's kind of picking up five hertz, but nothing terrific. All right. Let's go to something different here. Let's go up to one kilohertz. Okay. And let's go function. And we'll look at the period. Uh, okay, looks like it's only counting period on the A channel. So one kilohertz. We're getting a period of 999.99 microseconds. So, you know, round that up to a thousand microseconds or one millisecond. And there's our period. If I take that up, there's a megahertz. And we get 999.97 nanoseconds. So that's looking good as well. Now let's uh, change configuration here. Hook up both channels and check out the ratio and the time interval too. Okay, so I have both channels hooked up to the digital function generator and they are both outputting a one kilohertz square wave at uh, one volt peak to peak. And you can see here, if I press the button, there's, we're on frequency A at one kilohertz and frequency B at one kilohertz. There's our period. Now that's a totalizer, which is simply counting every time it, reach, it reads a uh, rising edge. Now, here's our ratio of A to B. Which is odd. I thought they would both be a... I thought that would be a 1. Let's see what happens if I change this. Well, that's not reading at all. Wonder if perhaps the amplitude is too low. Let's go 5 volts peak to peak. Channel 2, 5 volts peak to peak. Channel 1. Also 5 volts peak to peak. 1 kilohertz. Okay, channel 2. Frequency 1 kilohertz. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. Low pass filters are off. Both at one kilohertz. Let's ramp it up. Very strange. Here, let me show you the. Uh... Oops. Pardon the bouncing camera. Okay. So you guys can see that. I got seven kilohertz on channel two, one kilohertz on channel one. All right, let's take channel two to five. And we'll go channel one frequency 10. So that's a, that's a two to one ratio, but she's no working. All right, let's come back over here to the, uh, to the counter. Again, pardon the bouncy camera. Now the time interval is working. Frequency A at 10, B is 5, totalizer, and ratio. Okay, there's now the ratio is working. So 10, take it up to 15. There we go. 20. So that's showing us that way. Let's take this down to 10 on channel 1. Then I'll bring up channel 2 frequency. 
and we'll take it up to 20, which should give us 0.5. Good. So that's all working. Okay. Excellent. Now there's also a nice hold function here. So you can grab that and take a look. And then when you press it again, it lets go. I guess there's only one thing left to do, and that's tear this guy apart and see what it's made of. What do you guys say? Should we look under the hood? Okay, we'll do it. All right, let's open her up. Noise warning, noise warning, noise warning. There we go. Oh. You always want to be careful to watch for a cable connecting the case shield. Just like that. Don't want to rip them off. All right. Let's get in here and have a better look. All right, so we have our power input coming in, transformer. We got some relays. There's a mob back there for protection. And if you see here, actual switch. Very nice. Now, this uses a lot of TTL logic, you can see. Um, let's zoom in. If you guys can see what's on some of these chips. focusing I guess okay so what's that one say s74500 D I'm unfamiliar with that chip uh, HC138 that's a mux then we've got what's that say HC374 that is Don't quote me, but I think that's a flip-flop. And then we got this uh, Toshiba chip here. I don't know if you guys can actually see it that well. Let me... Uh, if I shine some light across it, we'll get a better view. What the hell does that say? TD... Oh, TD6. That's a transistor array. Uh, Atmel ATF22V10B-25PC. Not sure what that is. I mean, we can look it up if you want, but again, I just don't really know. All right, we got here HC 245s. Those are bus octal transceiver buses. Oh, you didn't get to see them, did you? Right there, in there. And then we got this guy, an AT 89C52. Well, that there is uh, an 8052 compatible CMOS microprocessor. We've got a crystal here at 11.0. 592 megahertz, which is going to be the crystal for that microprocessor. And then if we look up here, can I get it so that you guys can actually see that? If I shade it, maybe. There we go. That is our temperature controlled oscillator, our TCO at 10 megahertz so of all the counters i have now this one is the best one okay the input section is uh, okay zoom out 
our input sections under this can here and it's soldered on so I, I am not taking it off but uh, pretty simple stuff here really just a bunch of uh, flip-flops and modulator demodulators counting you know uh, a peak comes in it clocks it moves on to the next one clocks it moves on to the next one clocks it let me uh, let me put this back together and we'll talk just a little bit about counters and how they work counters quick and dirty because I don't want to keep you guys too long so here we have our incoming signal so in order to count that signal we need to count one of the edges whether it's rising or falling it really doesn't matter but we'll say we're going to count on the rising edge so what we do is we open our gate at some point and then we close our gate at some point and that's what our gate timing is doing and then this is the time period whether it's uh, what do we have 10 milliseconds 100 milliseconds 1 second and 10 seconds so say this is our 10 millisecond gate and it counts the pulse boom one edge and it shuts off well here's the thing let's do another signal here let's say we open our gate here and we close our gate here so this is our gate time and for counting rising edges we get one but had we shifted our gate time to here we would have one two so there you can see you get a bit of a counting error that way that way that way oh my goodness so another way that the counter can work is the reciprocal timing method and what it does is it waits for a rising edge and then it opens the gate for the certain period of time and then you can either close the gate which is much more accurate but still not the best accuracy the best accuracy has the dual right the uh, dual edge detect where we open the gate on a rising edge and then we wait for another rising edge to close the gate so now this is our gate time and it is a random gate time based on those rising edges but what we've got down going on down here is our 10 megahertz clock is running freely so all we have to do is count our rising edges now one two three four and then count how many clock pulses a little bit of math and she's all done so quick and easy on how counters work so that's it for this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give me a thumbs up if you haven't checked out the patreon page check it out please i'm asking a dollar a month to help keep the channel going because uh the old youtube uh she's screwing everybody left and right oh, i'll probably get banned for saying that but you guys know that anyway all right that's it i'm out peace